Welcome to Impact Farming, where we introduce you to the people and ideas that will have a massive impact on your farming operation. Brought to you by Farm Marketer. Sit down, start the engine, and let's roll with today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Impact Farming Show. We have a gentleman here who's becoming a regular guest on the show for good reason. Welcome, Terry Betker. How are you? I'm great, and thanks for inviting me back. I am so happy to have you, and our audience is as well. Terry is with Backswath Management, and I'll let him introduce himself, but we are here today mm -hmm speaking about a very, 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 very important topic, the keys to financial success. Yes. Before we dive in and give you guys the keys to financial success, can you tell our audience a little bit more about you? Sure. I'm, I'm a farm management consultant. Uh, what we do at Backswath is farm and agribusiness management consulting. We focus on areas of management, uh, human resource management, transition planning, and we have some specialty services like conflict management, we do record keeping for farms, and we spend a lot of our time talking to farms about financial performance. Excellent. We are going to be speaking about financials today, and in the topic we're calling it the keys to success, yeah. the keys to your farm success, and that, we truly believe, is financials. Why do you feel it's so important for farmers to actually have professional financial documents for their business? Because it captures financial performance on a regular basis of the business, and without that information, it's hard to get clarity on what your financial strengths and weaknesses are, and without that clarity or without the understanding that comes with developing and looking at those statements and the decisions that you make are in a financial void and sometimes the outcomes can be good and sometimes the outcomes can be not so good. Why financial performance for farms is so important and perhaps maybe more important than other businesses is because there's a lot of capital investment required a lot of that investment is financed and has to be because of the dollar values or the amount of money we're talking about. And lastly, because there's a, a, a lot of the business that <clears throat> excuse me, is impacted through um, events that are outside of farmers' control. So it all kind of rolls up to make the financial aspect of a business, of a farm, really important. Okay, excellent. So, word on the street, let's call it that. I've chatted with many, many farmers and many have connected with me as well. I have a sneaking suspicion, and there's no judgment at all, but I have a sneaking suspicion and also a bit of a thumb on that pulse that there are a lot of farmers that do not use a software to generate financials for their business. Is that correct? Are there a lot of farmers out there that aren't using tools? I think yes. We did a general observation. There's a lot of, I, I, I guess the, the most important, most relevant part of what you just said was use them. And there are farmers that have systems that, that capture their financial in information, the, the annual income and expenses, and whether that's a software program or whether it's a ledger or however they get at it, uh, those systems are out there. And then some of, those, some of those systems are, especially for farms that are incorporated, then there are formal financial statements developed. And the, the important part of the use them is while some of those systems are there, and in, in, in some way all farms will capture some aspect of financial performance because they have to file a tax return. Yes. And or GST returns, you know, I mean there's those compliance component parts of it. What I what I think generally that gets missed is the use them part. Okay. And 
And so most farms that I know spend not a lot of time living in the past. It's more about what are we going to do next year and the year after that. Well, some of the benefit from looking at past financial performance can help you with some of your future outcomes. Okay. So I want to set the stage a little bit when we're speaking about this. So when I'm talking about financials, and you hit the nail on the head, having a software, whatever that is, a ledger, somewhere that tallies up your expenses by line items, so fuel, repairs, um, inputs, etc., etc., and that generates your income and expense statement, your balance sheet, and uh, a few other ones as well. But that's what we're talking about when we say financials, right? Yes. Being yeah. able to see what your income is for the given year and your expenses by line item. Yeah, and so the, 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 there's three. There's three pretty important parts of a full set of financial statements. Okay. There's your balance sheet or your statement of net worth. It's just your listing of your assets and your liabilities and the equity or earnings. There's your income statement where the profit is generated and then there's the cash flow where the money comes and goes. Excellent. So those three statements form part of a fully developed set of financial statements for a farm business. All farms can have a set of financial statements. Doesn't have to just be incorporated farms, doesn't have to be large farms. Small farms should have financial statements. Modest sized farms should have financial statements. And those statements should be done at least once a year. And with that information, then you can look back and see what some of your financial trends are, what the strengths and weaknesses are. And back to what I said earlier, these farmers then can benefit from using that information to inform some of their decision-making processes going forward. Okay, excellent. This is, uh, call me a geek, but I love this stuff. I think you do too. Well, finance, I particularly enjoy talking to farms about financial performance. We teach finance at the university and we lecture on finance or do workshops on finance. I find farm financial analysis just flat out interesting. Yeah, well, and you know what I like about numbers? So much of everything in life is emotional. There's so much information out there. Numbers are black and white. Yeah. There's no line, unless you like throw away some receipts yeah. and don't record it. Yeah. But it, it, it literally is your key to financial success. It's yeah. your roadmap. And let me go on a little bit of a riff here. I mean, as a farmer, what I do, and for my business, for a marketer, how I use my financials, we have the historical, so I can see what we've done every single year. Yep. I have what's going on this year. Mm -hmm. And what I do is at the end of every year, I take my income and expenses, mm -hmm. I evaluate them against last year, mm -hmm. and I actually use that to set a budget for the next year. Mm -hmm. So I use that data. For prime example, on the farm, we do this as well. And how we use this information, we look and we go, machinery and repairs, oh my goodness. Because there's something to be said when you're paying a $4,000, $3,000, you don't realize how much you are spending unless you look at the category. And you know, we've made some pretty important decisions on the farm based on looking at our financials. And if we weren't looking at the financials, we'd be making more emotional decisions, uh, right? Yeah. We wouldn't have got yeah. rid of that tractor. Yeah. Because when we seen that tractor, I won't say the make, the model, or the amount that it costs us in repairs. When we seen year after year <coughs> how much that tractor was costing us to fix, we looked at that and we said, okay, what does a new tractor cost? What's that payment gonna be? You never know if there's gonna be repairs, but you can use that to make decisions, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. that's what, the, 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 num the, numbers don't, the numbers don't lie. The numbers are what they are. You've got that exactly right. Now, having, and I agree with everything you just said about using the financial information to make those decisions. The numbers don't make the decisions though. No. They're just context to the, to the decisions that are being made. Right. And without the numbers, then there is no context and the decision to invest or to finance or to whatever on the farm, spend or buy or repair. Do we repair or do we replace? Yeah. 
with without without the context of the numbers, then those decisions are made in in a void and gut feel, or, or we hope or we think it's going to work out. And oftentimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And again, the numbers and looking back at historical performance, past performance, isn't going to 100% guarantee future outcomes. But if you use that information and then make an informed decision about where to invest or how to finance our business or any, this, any decision in the farm that has a financial correlation to it, then at least you've made the most informed decision that you can. Absolutely. It, prime example, and I'm just so passionate about this because had we not had those financials to look at, like I said, I think as farmers, we're so used to spending money, getting that checkbook well, out, you yeah. get immune to it. Yeah. And you pay this bill and this bill, and you don't realize at the end of the year, all those bills ended up to X, yeah. and you could be making a payment on a different tractor. So you've, you've just introduced a whole other aspect of, of, of this topic, financial performance. And I, in, in thinking of the, uh, of the discussion I'd have with, with you here today, it made me think of uh, what I've come to understand as a kind of a common philosophy of farms when it comes to expenses. If we need it, we buy it. Yes. And that sometimes it does need to get bought, but are there things in a business where there is some discretion in terms of the timing or the amount or options? And with financial information, then those decisions might sometimes be a little bit different. Yeah. yeah, and same example, and I'm sharing this because I, I'm good about throwing myself under the bus because I think yeah. we, we learn if we hear other people and the way they've used it and the way they've made mistakes, and I'm not perfect, I sure try and grow every year and get better, but same thing, if you need it, you buy it. And we've operated that way at different times when we didn't use our financial tools to the best. And same thing, there's a lot of purchases. Farms have a lot of money coming in, yeah. a lot of yeah. cash, <clears throat> all at once. And it's very easy. We need a new quad. Oh, there's a used one for five grand. Let's go buy it. Oh, the farm truck copped out. It's done. There's that used one for 10 grand. And I've heard, we've made the mistakes, and I've heard so many farmers that they just go and buy those five, 10 grand cash where maybe that's not the best decision if you're looking at your actual financials. Mm -hmm. Because those fives and tens, and they add up. They add up. Yeah. And maybe at the end of the year, you just ate up all your profit, yeah. or you're going into the hole. You see, the thing that makes the, what we're talking about, we're talking a little bit about financial performance in the context of, of budgeting, because it's, it, but farms typically don't budget on a line-by-line -line basis. Some businesses do. Some businesses set a line budget for repairs or office expenses and once that budget's used up they don't have any any other source yes. that, that they don't spend anymore. Farms don't tend to manage that way um, and I'm not suggesting that they have to but I am going to, going to suggest that that if there is one of those decisions that in that terms of that philosophy if we need it we buy it sometimes sometimes the decisions are that we need it we need to replace the, the quad. Right. And then my, my suggestion is, okay, well, if you need to replace that quad, are there things, other things in the, in the farm that you had budgeted for that maybe you could defer or not do without? Yes. And all those decisions all roll up at the end of the year and create a financial outcome. Absolutely. <laughs> and you don't quite notice that impact when you're not paying attention. Then at the end of the year, you go, oh, wow. Well, and that, that introduces us a whole other notion because what, what I think we'll probably end up talking about here is, is how to get at some of this stuff. Well, looking at your financial, or your records once a year is not frequent enough. No. Because if you do it, well, monthly is ideally, but at, at least more than once a year, if you know something earlier in the year, it gives you more time to take some corrective or helpful action and help to end up with better results rather than just at the end of the year look at everything that transpired and say, oh, that's what we got. Yeah. You know, and again, I walk both lines with Farm Marketer. We have our complete set of financials and we have income and expenses every month. So I have monthly financials and I look at it that way. 
And I do realize farms and our farm financials are a little bit different. You can't quite do that monthly, but you're so right, looking at it more than once a year. You can do it monthly. Yeah, Yeah. farms can farms can do it monthly. It's it's uh, it it would depend. I mean, one of the decisions is is I, I I I think the let's let's just all farms can benefit from having fully or or completely or well developed set of financial statements. But the frequency of how often those statements get generated through the year depends on the needs of the farm. So for a lot of farms, putting your income statement together or your balance sheet uh, once a year at the end of the year is good enough. Yes. But you can do it every month. You can do it quarterly. It depends on how frequent the farm wants to look at their financial position. You're right. So what I, you know, I think that one of the decisions that that farms would want to uh, come to understand is where are they at currently with their financial, or their approach to financial management, and, and then how frequent do they want to do it? So they only want to, they only want to have the processes relevant to what they're going to use. Right. Yeah. If you're good, yeah. Why do it monthly if you're not going to look exactly. at it? You're just wasting time. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. So just make it, make it, make it consistent with what it is that your that uh, any given farm thinks would be helpful in their business. Okay, perfect. So I took us down a little rabbit trail. You did. Because I'm so passionate about it. Now I'm going to get us back on track, but I think sometimes the good stuff is in those details, right? Yeah, I got a question for you. Sure. You do your budgets. Yes. And it helps you to understand what your financial picture might look like for the next year. Do you set financial targets for what you would like that performance to look like five years from now? No. We, no, we, what we do, I take our annual financials, yeah. Anthony and I, we get the year end books and then I get that in Excel format, I plop it in yeah. and compare it year over year yeah. past. I take that and actually we budget for the next year. Excellent. And then what we do, we go, okay, here's our financial situation. Mm-hmm. What's important to us this year? Mm-hmm. Okay, we really need a new tractor or we want to put bunk feeders Mm -hmm. in front of the pens. What are we going to focus on? Or we want to take profit or whatever the case is. That's how we use it. And you know, I have found we're pretty consistent on gas and repairs year to year. So we just take that and it sets a bit of the intention and it also holds us accountable. We know you can't go to the good old auction down the road and buy a couple thousand here, a couple thousand there, because we're accountable, there's a budget. But we formally have not budgeted five years out. As farmers and where we wanna go in our future, we're looking at different moves with buying or selling land. It's, it's funny you ask that. We are looking at whether we want to grow. Yes, that's where I'm going. Is that where I have you're another going? question for you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're looking at what's the next level. <clears throat> yes. And does it actually make sense? Yeah. Or could we sell here, downsize a little bit? What size of farm is more profitable yes. for us? Yeah. That's where we're at. So we do map out financials but it's more a big picture if we buy this piece of land we got to buy 40 more cows and this 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 how does that fit in so yeah. i guess we do i just don't line it on that spreadsheet yeah. you're using historical financial performance to help you make decisions going forward it's excellent thank you yeah. you know and again i i'm not gonna pat myself on the back because i've made all the mistakes you oh. know i have been so fortunate yeah I have had some amazing businessmen in my life that have mentored me. And when we started for our marketer, financials was a thing they brought in because they're businessmen. They taught me and I was very fortunate to have those mentors teach me about that. And I learned, you make the mistakes, you don't use them. And eventually if you're continuing to look at them, you realize how powerful they are. This is a really, I, I wrote down another comment I wanted to make, and this is a perfect time for me to, to make it here now, and that is, you know, all farms have financial imperfections. I, I have yet to find the perfect set of farm financial statements. I have yet to find the farm that's managed perfect, perfectly financially. 
So everybody, we. Yeah. everybody is at a certain point, and I think that's the important thing. Wherever any farm may listen to this podcast or interview is at in their business, is good. Let's understand that, and now what are we going to do with it? You know, I have a joke I got to share, and I'm assuming there's a few farmers out there that can relate. So we get our financials at the end of the year, and yeah. then you have a category called miscellaneous, yeah. and it's just sky high. And now we've come up with a joke. Anthony gets off the farm once in a while. He goes to town and he goes to Canadian Tire. And of course, when you go into Canadian Tire, you don't leave without a couple hundred dollars spent. You don't even know where you spent it. It's on tools, it's important. But now we joke and we call the miscellaneous category the, the Canadian Tire 200 because you don't get out of there without $200. So we have that budgeted in because we know when he goes, he spends the famous Canadian Tire 200 yeah. and we budget that in. It's a good thing he's going, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a good thing he's going to Canadian Tire and not the local equipment dealership because the 200 would be $200,000. Yeah, well there's that one too. Yeah. He goes to town once yeah. in a while, he comes back, he's like, you know how much I spent? Yeah. I'm like, just go to town once a month, yeah. Anthony. Yeah. 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 Anyways, yeah. I digress. Okay. So. We've chatted a little bit about why I'm passionate about yeah. financials and you have a concept called resilience Yes. and you feel that it's strongly connected to financials. Yes. Yeah. Well, we were asked to uh, host or lead a, a couple of webinars on financial resiliency and there's, there's a lot of, well, you know, it's um, from from about 2008 to 2018, in, in, in for a lot of at least Western Canadian farms, uh, cash flow is pretty strong, yeah. but it's changed. And with that, then there's some a different uh, focus, perhaps a little different emphasis put on where are we at in our farm financially, and then this notion of resiliency. Well, to me, resiliency, where we all have different aspects of resiliency in our, in, our, in our life, financial resiliency, to me, is simply the ability of the farm to withstand a catastrophe. Okay. And so the financial resiliency is a function at any given time of what the assets are in a business and what the debt. A farm with more debt is less financially resilient than a farm with less debt. Okay, so there's a, that's, that's financial resiliency now. How you build financial resiliency is through future profit. Okay. And how do you drive future profit? We were talking about it. Increase revenue, decrease costs. And back to the comment of, well, this is what our balance sheet looks like today, and this is how financially resilient we are today, meaning, uh, you know, at the end of 2019, what do we want or need that to look like three years or five years from now? And that has a lot to do with what we want the business or need the business to become. Okay. Yeah. It's a kind of an interesting, it's an interesting notion. I, I don't know that you manage financial resiliency. I think you measure financial resiliency. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's like anybody, if you're max right, take it to a mainstream person. If you're max right out and you lose your job, you're not very financial financially resilient yeah. are you no. yeah. versus if you were cautious with the way you spend have money in the bank you're definitely more resilient to withstand losing a job yes. yeah. that cop it's, it's that's a good that's good context okay yeah. I just I had to kind of put it in yeah. and you know uh, the reason I you know how much and I've said it a million times how much I am passionate about this but farming we have so many variables Excuse me that we can't control. Yeah. It, I would almost, I would argue with anybody that farming is one of the most risky businesses out there. But there's a lot of things that we can control. And it all comes down to knowing our financial part of our business and being on top of our financials, right? Yes, yeah. The, uh, there's, there's a saying that you can't manage what you can't measure. And, and it's true. And so what we need to measure our financial uh, situation, that's, that's captured in our financial statements. And then with that information, we make decisions that are going to have future impacts. 
what we grow, what we spend, like what we invest in our expenses, what we invest in buildings and equipment, how we finance that investment. Those are all decisions that can benefit from having uh, a good understanding of your existing or past financial performance. Okay, excellent. It works. It works? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, I have, I, for some farms, it, it may, so I, I get farms that, that, that tell me two things. One is, we don't know where to begin to look as to yeah. how to improve. It's intimidating when you can don't be. know. Yeah. yeah, and especially some farmers, I think, think of themselves perhaps a little bit too critically about where they're at and what their financial situation should look like. I, there's a lot of farms that are in pretty good financial situation. They may be experiencing some cash flow stress, but there's probably quite a bit of uh, wealth there to, to work with. And so understanding where things are at and then starting that process forward, um, yeah, it is what it is. And if you want to become more, or if a farm family or farm business wanted to get more on top of their financials, just find a place to start. Yeah. It can happen. I've watched farms start from uh, a, a place where they wouldn't have as much insight into their financial strengths and weaknesses and over time have uh, moved forward in that. Yeah, it's yeah, not it's, very hard. No, it's absolutely doable. You know, once you go, it is, it's intimidating, I think, because it's just so big and there's a lot of numbers and where do you start? But it really isn't. It's just numbers. And once you get going, those financial spreadsheets are so easy yeah. to read. And then once, once, once you do it one year, it's a little easier the next year. Yes. It's a little easier the year after. And it's, it is doable. And it's important enough, though, Tracy, that if, if there, and there, and there very well may be farm families out there that this is, this is not something that they're ever going to do. It's important enough that if that's not something they're going to do, they still need to get it done. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hire a bookkeeper. We made that decision because it was important. And of course, I'm busy with Farm Marketer and everything I do, but we hire a bookkeeper. They enter all our receipts into uh, Ag Expert software, uh, um, accounting software, and it's done for us. Yep. They don't charge a lot of money. And then the information is provided to us at the end of the year. Good. Yeah. It goes to your accountant, and then yeah. you get financial statements, and then you use those. So it's all, it's all, it all depends a lot about how the farm family wants to approach this part of their business and as we just talked about here a few minutes ago it's more important today because of the financial realities at play than it was a number of years ago absolutely so I heard you give a great presentation about financials and how important it is to farmers and you made a comment about the fact that technology and farms is just yeah. moving at the speed of light how how are how does our skill set as farmers correlate to that? And this is going to be a very much a generalized comment. Okay. And it's completely from observation. I don't have any stats really to back this up. Okay. But the answer is, it's not. It's not keeping up. No. And you know, and, and it's just not my observation. So uh, we we talk to farm families all the time, but we also spend a lot of time talking within the industry. Uh, I, I participate in a peer group of consultants, so we get okay. together four times a year. We just had a meeting here um, a couple of weeks ago, and part of the discussion at that meeting, it's a free-flowing discussion, but part of that particular discussion was around farms and financial performance, and the comment being that, that generally the farms have outgrown the financial performance or the financial management capabilities of, of farms. Wow. And uh, and and that to me that's that's quite it's quite significant, and there's concern attached to it. I think in general, and I don't want to become chicken little here. I, you know, I don't want to no. present this as doomsday. And that's not the goal of the no. show. But but there's something that's very important to that. So if if that in fact is a reality, and I believe that to be so, uh, as long as cash flow on a farm is really strong, it kind of masks a lot of challenges. But where cash flow maybe squeezes up a little bit, then some of what we just talked about kind of begins to manifest itself in the, in the farm. And it affects decisions that are made on the farm. It can affect relationships within the farm. 
it can have uh, it, it can start to become quite uh, quite have a, a quite a wide ranging impact on on the business and the family. And I want to say one other thing about this too, because this this is what I drive around a lot. I get to think about farm management <laughs> quite a bit, and, and uh, I worry about the aspect of what we're just talking about, financial management and the scale or the size of farms, the complexity of farms that are out there now and, and transition. Because we've got the next generation of young farmers coming into some of these farms and they're going to assume at some point in the not too distant future, some of them, the responsibility for managing the financial affairs of a fairly complex business. That's a way different situation yeah. than what their parents entered into. So to me, this there's there's some. Uh, I, th I think I think uh, I think that's just something that we should we collectively in in, uh, in agriculture should pay uh, a little bit of attention to. I agree, and you know what? There's just such big dollars in yeah. agriculture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it you know what? I, I it is, and I uh, I don't see that changing very quickly, very fast. No. So let's, and then we talked a little bit earlier here about looking at where. Th I mean, ask any of the farm families listening to this to look at what the financial uh, structure of their farm income statement and balance sheet 10 or 20 years ago and look at what it looks like to now and just try to think forward what that might look like. Wow. It, 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 it provides context to what we're talking about. You're right. One of the things I wanted to ask you about and get your thoughts on this. <clears throat> I think one of the tricky parts with farms and where mistakes, I guess there's several areas where we might not keep up or make mistakes, um, cash flow. See, because as farmers, we're not like the business across the street. They're not like farm marketer. I receive income on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. I have expenses on a monthly basis. Most farmers don't have that. and. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I just want to get your thought on this. One of the big things with farm finances is cash flow. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the next generation stepping in. You do one thing wrong with cash flow, you can have some big mistakes, right? Well, it can have, yeah, it can have big impact. Yeah. Some, sometimes, sometimes they could be good out outcomes and sometimes they could be mistakes or not so good outcomes. And, uh, one of the really important things about this is that if there is something, and for every farm I'm pretty sure there will be, some decision that was made that didn't have great financial outcomes, what did we learn from that? And yeah. try not to uh, try not to let that happen again. And, I like it. Yeah, so we learn and carry forward. Excellent. Yeah. So I met you at Egg Days. I was wandering through Egg Days with my family and we got to talking. This is a scenario here. Yeah, yeah. I've known Terry for a long time yeah. now already. And I ended up coming by your booth. Mm -hmm. It caught my eye. I want to really build a strong farm operation that's going to last three, four, <coughs> many more years. Mm -hmm. We got to talking. You're a great conversationalist. I invited you down to the farm because I'm not quite sure where I wanted to start. So you come into the farm and you're here for coffee. Where would you start that conversation on helping me build a financially strong farm? Uh, I, that's, I, that's a great scenario. The first, thing that I, the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to tell me a little bit about your farm. Okay. Because financial, just diving right into the discussion about finance with any context of the business, then we don't we we understand the numbers, but we don't understand what those numbers uh, mean or what they're uh, relevant to. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is tell me a little bit about your farm and your family, and then the next thing I would ask you would be, okay, so what's your vision? What do what do you uh, what do you hope to achieve here? Okay. Uh, what do you see or what do you want or need the farm, the business to look like, say five years from now? Okay. And I'd. Uh, Wait until you answered, and I, you know, I'm not. I wouldn't be expecting anything other than casual discussion of what that looks like. I wouldn't be expecting you to give me something Hello, written my down. Business exactly. Plan. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I just want to understand. 
And then I, then I would ask you likely if I could take a look at your financial statements. Okay. And if you had your financial statements, then that would be good because we could start uh, talking about them. If you didn't, well then I know, like, like if, if you weren't able to give me financial statements. So what do, what do I mean? I mean a balance sheet or a statement of assets and liabilities and an income statement. Excellent. That's that's what I'm looking for. And if you if you have them, great. And if you don't, okay, well, that doesn't mean that that I'm not, that I don't want to talk to you anymore, but I know that now we need to start uh, trying to put that picture together. Because the financial statements um, provide insight into the business. They, there's, there's a, the, the, the financial statements are the numbers. Mm -hmm. so, and we have to take the numbers because just, just the statements alone, Tracy, don't tell you much about the business. We have to turn the numbers into a, a story. We need to understand them. Mm -hmm. And we explain that or we understand those statements through ratios. Okay. So we calculate ratios and that then so ratios are so the story is here's another example you can think of it like a jigsaw puzzle okay so you have your your farm five years from now is a jigsaw puzzle of all the activities that are going on in the business and the ratios are just a piece of that jigsaw puzzle they all tell you a little bit about the financial performance of the business so then after that discussion, so we've now, I've learned about your business a little bit, I've learned about what you want to accomplish with it, I have a little bit of insight into your financial situation, and then I'm going to ask you, okay, what's your biggest, what's your biggest concern, where, where can we help? Okay. And if it's in finance, that's great, if it's in something else, that's great as well. Uh, oftentimes, oftentimes I'll uh, hear from farms that they're, they don't know where their financial situation is at. Okay. And that's, that's troublesome, I think. And I, I think for some farms that aren't confident about where their financial situation is at, there's perhaps a worry that maybe it's not as good as it should be. But I'm not there to pass judgment. No. I'm there to help. And, and every, every farm, I think, should try to get to the point of where they understand what their financial strengths and weaknesses are. And as we said earlier, I have yet to find the perfect farm. They all have financial strengths and weaknesses. And then with that understanding, we can begin to do something about it. I like it. It is, it's so powerful, right? Yeah. You can look at that and go, okay, our expenses are a little too high. Or you know what? Yeah. If we want to grow, we need more revenue. It's just... Or if we're if we're experiencing uh, cash flow shortages, if we don't know how we're going to pay our our uh, farm input loan back, we don't know how we're going to raise the working capital of the farm next year. But sometimes it gets pretty grievous, or it could be. And I had this discussion just the, the other day, literally with a farm. You know, there's neighbors wants to sell his farm. Should I should I put a tender in? Okay. And. You know, three or four years ago, he told me that he wouldn't even ask me. He just would have bought it. Okay. But it's different now. Yes. And now I want those. I make. Am I making a smart decision? So the numbers we again, as we talked earlier, the numbers don't make the decisions, but they create context for the decision. Understanding of how you would make those decisions. What's worse, I think, is is where there's cash flow challenges. And I, I hear from farms uh, like we, that, that, well, they didn't know. And, it, and, and, and if someone, they, they say, or I've heard this comment too many times that if we, had have, if we had have known, maybe we could have done something differently in the past. Because as you said earlier, those past decisions have future incomes, future financial incomes. And so I'm sorry, I'm rambling on a little no, bit here. No, this is gold. But, but uh, the, the importance of understanding and what I would want to know from you is what are, your, what are your concerns and if it's in finance and you just need to have a better understanding of where things are at, great, that's where we start. If you have a pretty good understanding of where things are at and then you would like my opinion on a decision like again buying land or trading in equipment or something, I'm happy to do that as well.
Okay, that's excellent. Oh, good stuff. Well, and 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 yeah, and it's interesting and and relevant, relevant, relevant to the the business and. It would be a way better if we were talking about canola. Well, I, I guess it might be a way better if canola was $16 a bushel and land was a third of the price it is, but it's not. Right. You know, we are where we're at. And you know, that, again, I, I'm going to, what's the expression, be the dead horse? Everybody out there is so passionate about their farm. Many of us are operating farms that have been in the family for many, many generations. And why I spend the time on subjects that maybe others go, what? I don't want to learn about farm financials. I think this stuff is the absolute keys to financial success. Let me hop over here. If I want to be a business person and I wanted to buy a business, and I'm going to buy a franchise. Mm -hmm. They would have every single thing mapped out mm -hmm. to the T, to the berries that gets put in there. The income, the expenses, it's all mapped out. And for me, what breaks my heart, I'll get to the point of it, and really one of the reasons I started this show, we love our family farms. We want them to continue on. It's an amazing way to mm -hmm. live. I think we owe it to ourselves, our farm, our future generations to have the strongest financial operation and with everything that's out of our control trade canola mm -hmm. land prices we absolutely need to have this data and just have it eventually dial right in so that we are operating the strongest financial operation that we can mm -hmm. I, I I agree that, and I'm I'm going to I'm going to suggest that we could even look at that just a, even a little bit differently, in that the way you approach financial management and thinking forward to the next generation and your family that's going to farm is that you leave a legacy of your of how you approach financial management, and what we want to do is to put in place structures that will give us better financial information or give farms better financial information and then that becomes a legacy that's carried on to the next generation because those children growing up at the farm know and have an understanding or appreciation for how any given farm approached the financial management of its business. Excellent. I love it. I don't know if you can talk those words of wisdom but we are going to work to wrap it up and I know I know you have so much in there that you want to tell our audience. Can you leave us with some final words of wisdom on the importance of financial data? Yeah, I, I absolutely there's some things that come to mind. And one is if if you, if any farm doesn't know, ask. Okay. Ask ask for help. And that can be from an accountant, a, a lender, a consultant, uh, another business associate. Uh, there's there's programs available through workshops where you can learn do do it yourself, and, and those are all those are all good things. So if if anybody listening to this doesn't doesn't know or is kind of wondering where they're at financially in their business, ask for help uh, because it matters. It does. And I got I've, I've, I have a couple. The next one would be when we're, when any farm is making a decision, then try to separate the business from the emotion. And mm -hmm. the numbers... That's hard. That's hard. The numbers help because the numbers are the numbers, as you said. Yes. That works to separate the business from the emotion. And the last one, and this is a, a, a generalized comment, but just because a farm can borrow money from a bank, doesn't necessarily mean they should. and doesn't necessarily mean that they're in a good financial situation. I agree. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's up to us to have that. You have to know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those are golden words right there. Thank you. Yes. And for those of you guys that are listening right to the end here, Terry has kindly agreed to give us some resources. And we are going to include those in the show notes. We're going to put together 
a few different things to give you guys some ideas on financials. So make sure you check out the show notes of this episode. And again, if anybody has any questions, can they contact you? Oh, absolutely. Love to talk to them. Okay. They can check, out, check us out through our website, maxwath.com. Uh, just phone us, contact us, probably contact us through you. Absolutely. And yeah, I'm happy to talk to them. And, excuse me. <coughs> we talked to lots of farms, Tracy, that doesn't end up in a uh, farm getting an invoice from us. Okay. You know, we, we're consultants and we have, a income set, we have our own financial statements. But, but we realize that sometimes there's questions out there and if we could help somebody or a farm through a situation or with a simple question, uh, we're, we're happy to do that. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to end up with an invoice attached to it. Excellent. Thank you, Terry, for joining us. Thanks for offering or uh, inviting me in. Thank you so much for the passion that you guys show in helping farmers succeed. I just love it. So thank you and thank you guys for joining us as well. If you enjoyed this episode, please like it, share it, and comment in the notes. Thank you guys, and see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye. You've been listening to Impact Farming. For more great episodes and articles designed to help you manage and grow your farming operation, head on over to farmmarketer.com. Don't forget to sign up while you're there. We will see you on the next episode.